Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2. On today's video, we're gonna be doing a keyboard repair, and it's an Alps SKCC keyboard, and it's the one from the Apple II clone that I've been working on on the main channel. I decided to break this video off from the main series because as a standalone video, it's gonna be easier for people to find this video if they're searching for how to repair Alps keyboards. These particular types of ALP switches were used on a lot of computers in the very late 70s into the early 80s, including the actual Apple II, the Macintosh line. This is a Mac keyboard here that needs some repair itself. TRS-80 Model 3 and tons and tons of other computers. It just so happens that this clone machine also used ALP switches, which is perfect because that allows me to do some repair work on this thing to get that keyboard fully functional. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at this very rusty keyboard from the Apple II clone machine, take the key switches off of that thing, take them apart, swap parts around and make working switches, put it all back together, and then hopefully have a fully functional keyboard. So let's jump into the repair action. So here's the keyboard and um, well, I've taken off some of the keys since last time because the keys that don't work are these ones here, S, X, back arrow, period, slash, and right shift. So a few of the keys here and a few of the keys over there. And well, you can kind of see what's going on here on the keyboard. I took more switches or more keycaps off than I needed to because things aren't looking so hot under here. Now, the middle part of the keyboard, I can see through the keys, it's a little grimy, but it's actually okay. The major rust areas are on these two spots right here, which definitely explains the fact that the key switches weren't working. Now, one thing we wanna make sure is the case is that over in this area, for instance, right shift and slash and period, these are all in a row. So we need to make sure there's not like a problem with the PCB, like the traces or something around there, because because that could possibly be the issue here. And this appears to be a double-sided PCB. And of course, all that rust means water probably made its way onto the other side of the PCB. So I think the best thing to do is let's get the multimeter out here and let's just tone out a few of these switches here just to see what's going on. It's not super easy to clip on here. I might just take these out. Yeah, this switch definitely, it doesn't work at all. Yeah, my thinking is that the key switches got inundated with water and just corroded the insides. So I think the best course of action, <laughs> let's get them out of the board. In fact, I think I wanna take out more switches than is even necessary, because if I take out all of these switches here and here, I can actually do a little bit of rust treatment on this with a little bit of rust converter. <laughs> Okay, so I've desoldered all of these. Uh, several of these have broken legs that are just, um, well, they came right off. In fact, one of them got stuck inside the desoldering iron. This is really difficult to desolder, this double-sided PCB. Most keyboards are really easy to get key switches out of because they're just single-sided and there's no via even. So it just comes right off and there's no risk. This thing I'm worried because if I don't have it completely off on the other side, I could actually potentially rip some traces on here. And now we have the annoying task of trying to get these out. Now, these types of switches, I usually just like push up against the pins with something like this IC here. And then you can pop this out. Whoa, it is stuck. And that has me thinking that there is still solder on the other side. <laughs> And of course we can't see it. I'm on this key switch here. Oh, this one's actually gonna pop out. There we go, that one came out okay. So that one has been removed. And indeed there's uh, connections that go up and down there. Let's try the one next door. Oh, this one's coming out as well. And again, this works because I'm pushing on the um, back side of the board. So that's a really good trick for getting these out. So that one's out. Let's try its neighbor. Nope, that one is definitely stuck in there. And I do not think it's this rust here. Let's try this one here. This one is coming out. Really not happy there. Oh, the rust. Yeah, kind of jammed it in there. So we can definitely look inside here. We can see that there are two sets of holes there for two different types of key switches, actually. The Alps ones use uh, these ones here that are closer together. Now, while these two are connected, there is a trace that goes down there somewhere. So I don't know if it's down here or wherever. And that's what I'm trying to avoid breaking. I don't want to rip anything on this side because I suppose if I did rip it, I could try to look in there, like through the empty hole and figure out where it goes. But I mean, like over here, we can't really see because this metal plate's in the way. And getting this metal plate off of here, 
<laughs> it would involve desoldering every single key switch. And I really, really don't want to do that. Now for these switches here where the pins are literally just broken and missing altogether, like there's nothing even to push on, I'm just going to have to try to yank them out from the top side. All right, so this switch here, I have it released. And whoa. <laughs> No wonder why it wasn't working. Now, the problem is with rust is it actually causes the metal to expand a little bit. Oh man, this is, this is bad under here. I'm gonna have to try to get in there and clean that up as much as I can, maybe with some IPA or whatever. But the rust causes it to expand around the edges here, which makes it even harder to get the switch out. It's kind of like, a, I don't know, packed in there or stuck in there. All right, this switch is completely breaking apart. Oh, the whole switch body came apart. Oh boy. So I need, I actually need this um, this part here, this little uh, slider, because we're gonna have to transplant that into the other switch. But this is quite the mess. <laughs> Look at that. It even left behind parts here. Oh no, look at this little piece down here. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why it's pretty hard to fix old computers sometimes when they are not stored properly. Alrighty, all the switches are out. That was a pain, especially for this rusty area. They're just so wedged in to the openings. This row, on the other hand, was actually quite easy to get out while well, these two, because there wasn't even any rust around them. So what I definitely need to do is we're gonna need to kind of try to clean this up a little bit with some IPA. I'm gonna need to try to clean up the PCB a little bit. Although it's funny, because now that I've been handling it, Looks like those holes are a little bit better, actually. Looks like uh, I don't think there'll be any problem soldering the new switches in. Now I need to rinse and repeat for this little area up here, probably this switch as well. But as you can see, looking down the middle of these key switches, you can see that the uh, metal plate there looks fine. Incidentally, check this out. This is the little LED there for this switch here, the little power LED. I would try to take that switch out. It does work, but I'm afraid because of uh, all this. So I'll leave that one. Space bar looks okay, because not a lot of corrosion there. Obviously there's corrosion on the edge here. So yeah, let's uh, keep going. I'm just gonna do a jump cut here. All right, I got all the switches out. Uh, these were a lot easier to take out because oh, there's just a lot less rust than there was over here. And I cleaned up a little bit and I started cleaning the PCB and I could see under about this area, there was some corrosion with some of the traces that run vertically. Now it is not super easy to see, but this via right here goes to that. And this via is supposed to go to there, which also goes to there. And it seems like due to corrosion, this one is no longer connected. This one still is, but this one's not. Now these are still connected here together. And I think this uh, goes off to some other switch as well. I forgot where it is. There it is, that one, and that's connected. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add bodge wires on both of these because those vertical traces that are underneath, both of them look pretty bad. It's right down here around these vias that it looks really bad. Everything else on the keyboard I think is completely fine. So we're pretty much good for, well, I think what I'm gonna do is get some of the rust converter and I'm just gonna paint that on to this to this area here. I don't want to spray it on with a spray can. Obviously, it's going to go all over the PCB. But with a little brush, I should just be able to paint that on, and that should at least convert this rust. Now, I'm not super concerned with this rusting more because once you take it out of a damp environment, it shouldn't keep rusting. But the rust converter is just going to cover it up, and it's going to be black, so it's just going to make it look a little bit better. All right, there we go. I finished painting it. It doesn't look great, but it's still drying. So I think it should look a little bit better once it's done, but this looks about a billion times better than it did. Now I can hear people right now screaming at their screens, you should be doing a full restoration on this. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Unfortunately, due to time constraints, I just don't have time to carefully disassemble this keyboard and sand the metal plate and do all that work. This is good enough to get it working. I think we're gonna have a fully working keyboard once this dries and I work on these key switches, which is what we're gonna do right now. So I'm gonna move this out of the way so it can dry. And let's take a closer look at these key switches that I took out. My intention was I'm gonna use these key switches here to replace 
these ones, but you notice there's a little bit of a difference here between these two. Yeah, the stem is a lot longer on this key switch than on the ones I just took out of the board. Now, if you're wondering where I got those key switches from, I got them from this Macintosh um, 512 or 128 keyboard that's very grotty, and I don't even know if this thing works. Uh, when I got this, it had a bunch of broken keys already, and I have a few of those key switches here with the uh, broken stems on them, but that's okay because what we need to do is take these switches apart. Well, first I need to see which of these work. Then we need to take the switch apart and get the stem out and then take these switches apart, take those stems out so that we can do some surgery here. All right, first thing to do is move the Mac switches out of the way. I already uh, validated that these work. I have a bunch more of the Mac switches here that weren't working so well. So I tested them all first because I don't wanna put non-working switches back into this keyboard since it's such a pain, especially. All right, first things first, for testing switches, you get a good multimeter with a good continuity mode and you have to hook on to the key switches. I recommend using something like this. And then we can see if the switch is good. And that switch is totally good. So I'm gonna put the known good switches over here by the keys. And I'm gonna quickly go through this and just make sure all these switches work. And I think they do. And that's a good ohms reading, by the way. When you push the switch down, it should just go right to something low like that. So let me go through these. Okay, so these are all switches that are not working. Now, that's actually more switches than I had figured out didn't work. But I think that's because some of these, when I was uh, going to test them, uh, the legs just fell off. Like the leg was there and then I just went boop and it fell off. I'm assuming one of those was in the board and still kind of working, but the corrosion was getting to it and it would have died anyways. I marked these with a dot on the side. Obviously, this one is totally dead. So what we need to do is we need to get out the slider out of all of these, which is this little white part right here. And the way this comes apart is this dark plastic on the top separates from this bottom part. In fact, uh, we have one that came apart on its own here. So we should be able to separate these just like this one did. And I'm just gonna figure out how. It's been a while since I've done this. I think what you do is you get underneath the gray plastic like this and then you can sort of slide it down a little. And now you can see it's unhooked and we have to do that on this side as well. And of course I'm using an X-Acto blade, which is dangerous. So don't do it with a blade like this. I am pretty sure that the keyboard experts have a better way of doing this than I'm doing it here. But there we go, it's coming apart. And now we just have to separate these and you have to wiggle it out like that. Oh boy, there's a lot of corrosion in there. So that's the switch plate there. And you can just see there's no way no way in heck that's gonna work. So that's bad. So we have a spring there, which we can keep and reuse if we need one. And then the slider just sort of comes out. There it is. So now we have two small sliders and a good spring. And I guess we have some good housings and stuff. But that switch plate there, nope, that shouldn't look like that. Nope, 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 nope. Now on some of these, it doesn't have this glue down here. You can actually slide that whole switch plate out, but these ones you cannot. So this whole bottom section here is no good. And there we go, that was a lot quicker. So like once you kind of get the hang of this, it actually goes a lot faster. Oh, the side reconnected here. You just have to wiggle it apart gently. There it is. And that switch plate looks far better than the other one. You see that? Doesn't have all that crustiness at least. But this switch is still not working. So we'll just keep the slider and we'll keep the spring. Oh, and I see why it's not working. It doesn't have a leg on it. <laughs> That's why. So the switch plate looks good. But yeah. Okay, so this is the switch body from the Mac keyboard and it's definitely the same. These are out switches for sure. So the slider and the spring all go back in. It's pretty easy to put these back together. They really kind of only go back together one way. Down at the bottom of there, there's a little nub where the spring goes. So if I recall, cause I've done this before, you put the spring on the slider nub like that. And then this all has to kind of go together and it has to go in properly like that, and there we go. And if we hook up the multimeter to this switch plate, this one should work now. There we go. Looks good. We're getting 0 0.07 ohms. So this is now a Macintosh bottom part with the short slider from the clone keyboard. Feels really nice as well. The plastic they use is pretty good quality on the slider. And here's another broken one, and now it's just same process. I have to just disassemble all these, these Mac switches, including this one with the broken stem, and then switch in those uh, short sliders. Oh yeah, I forgot. So using an X-Acto blade, you can use uh, tweezers. That works too. And I think it's probably safer. You're less likely <laughs> to stick yourself. 
Uh, then with the knife. Okay, we'll move the knife out of the way. I'll just stick to the tweezers. There we go. Oh, that one's broken. Oh no. Oh, okay. I was worried for a second. This is a Macintosh key switch. Well, that's interesting. Um, luckily, it doesn't matter because all we really need is this part here and the top and the spring, but we don't need this, um, that slider there. Hmm. None of the ones that came out of the clone are broken. So that is a relief. There we have a full set of switches for the clone computer. I'm just gonna push on them all. I should probably check them one more time before I put them back in the PCB. They all move and, and work smoothly and nicely. So that should be good. Now we have all these extra parts. Like a lot of this is just junk. That's junk. That's junk. Uh, this part here is junk. It's got half of a key switch in there. This one is broken. That's junk. That's junk. And that's junk. Okay, so these parts here are junk. What's not junk are the little springs here. So those are worth keeping. And then these non-broken sliders here, that one's busted. But these long stems here are good. That one's broken because these are actually good uh, to try to fix Macintosh key switches. For instance, that keyboard originally had some broken stems. Well, these are the replacement stems. And as you just saw, it's pretty easy to open up the switch body and switch that out. These parts are all good as well. They're just dirty. So there are some spare parts for Alps SKCC. So I'll be definitely keeping these. This stuff here gets thrown away and these go back in the keyboard with these keys, which I'll just give a little bit of a clean to before I put them back in, of course. And then we should have a working keyboard. There are all the keys reinstalled and my uh, crappy paint job on there that does make it look a whole lot better. I think when the keys are on and this thing is back in the case, it's really gonna look way better. You're not gonna see that rust when you look down through the keys. And even on this edge here, I painted as well. They are the two bodge wires I added in to correct this bad trace right there and this one here, which I think is going to fail. So hopefully that does the trick and all of these switches are going to work. And finally, before I put these back into the base plate here, I checked each one for continuity with the multimeter to make sure they were still looking good because I didn't want to have to go through the whole removal process again. And all the key switches are here and they're clean and they're ready to go back on. So let's do that. And there we have it one fully reassembled and hopefully fully operational Apple II Plus clone keyboard. Now, because this is missing, I am going to draw a little bit of a red mark on the ribbon cable here, just to indicate which is the pin one side. There we go, a little Sharpie. That goes a long way for helping with that problem. And there you have it. That's how you repair Alps SKCC keyboards. Now, I'm not going to show the testing of this keyboard in this video. It's going to be on the main channel in part three of the Apple II clone series. So if you want to see how it all turned out with all this repair work, definitely check out that video. As far as the techniques used to take the switches apart and do all that type of work, it's exactly the same on things like Apple keyboards, like this Mac 128 slash 512 keyboard. So if you have a keyboard like this with keys that don't work, Try to take them apart, swap parts around. You could try taking the key switch off, putting it in an ultrasonic cleaner. That might make it work. I found that putting deoxid down these switches doesn't really work very well. It can temporarily revive the switches, but they seem to fail again. So ultrasonic cleaner seems to be a little bit more of a permanent solution. But ultimately, if you can get your hands on some spare parts, SKCC switches, it's best to take those switches out from the back plate, do that swap remove all parts, get it all back in, and hopefully you'll have a fully functional keyboard. So if you like this video, I appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the second channel. It really, really helps me out. Put your comments down below if you have any thoughts about what I've done here. I'm sure keyboard experts will have lots of things to say about the techniques I use. There's probably many better techniques on how to get these switches out more easily and stuff like that. I'm really a novice at the whole keyboard thing. I just know how to get them out in a way that works for me so I can try to get these boards working. So your mileage may vary, but check the comments for more expert advice. And I'd like to give a huge thanks to my patrons. They keep me going. They actually support me and the channels here and they make it all possible. So a huge thanks to them. They are rock stars. If you want to become a patron, you can do so at the link in the description below. You get early access to videos and some other good behind the scenes stuff. And I guess that's going to be that. So stay healthy, stay safe. I will see you next time. Bye.